go ahead and go before the Lord in prayer. Father in heaven, we come before you right now as your children, knowing that you exist and that you love us and that there is a way you want us to live out our lives. And so right now, Father, we pray that you would be here with us, uh, that you would help us to be like you, Lord, that we would be decent and in order as you are a God of order. And so bless us now as we've come together. Unite our hearts, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well, my name is Pastor Tim Thompson. I'm a pastor with 412 Church down in Marietta, Southern California, also with Our Watch with Tim Thompson. And I've been asked to just open up with uh, the idea of the what they're calling spiritual abuse. Uh, as a person who lives in a Judeo-Christian mindset, I have these values that I want to impart to my family, a legacy that I want to pass on to my children and to my grandchildren. And that legacy includes those Judeo-Christian values that I have. In Deuteronomy chapter 11, it tells people like me, people with the Judeo-Christian faith, to commit ourselves wholeheartedly to these words of mine. Tie them around your hands and wear them on your neck and your forehead as reminders. Teach them to your children. Talk about them when you are at home and when you are on the road and when you are going to bed and when you are getting up. Write them on the doorpost of your house and on your gates. And so what we do is we systematically train up our children in the way that they should go. We train them up when they're at home. We train them up while we're on the road with them. We train them up when they're going to bed at night and the moment they wake up, it starts all over again. At all times, I am imparting my values to my family. And for me, those values include living a life that is striving to follow after Jesus Christ. And in Matthew chapter 16, Jesus said this. He says, if any of you wants to be my follower, you must turn from your selfish ways, take up your cross, and follow me. If you try to hang on to your life, you will lose it. But if you give up your life for my sake, you will save it. And what you do benefit if you gain, I'm sorry, and what do you benefit if you gain the whole world but you lose your own soul? Is anything worth more than your soul? And so Jesus is saying to give up your selfishness. And that is something I have tried to impart to my children is that you cannot be selfish. Anybody here ever had a two-year-old? <laughs> we always are trying to train up our kids at a very early age to share and not be selfish. Jesus was telling us the same exact thing, and he said this. He says, give up your life for my sake. When we talk about giving up our life, it's giving up our wants, our wishes, our needs, our desires. Why? Because the Christian life is marked as a person who esteems others as better than ourselves. We're always looking out for other people. And that is something I've strived to give my children. Because of this Christian faith, I've laid this groundwork for them of a selfless life, putting what they've wanted aside to help better other people. Now let me, I've shared this with you as a, a way of setting a little groundwork. And I want to read to you from the California framework that may be approved later on today. And the framework as it is written, chapter 5 for the 7th through 8th graders, students were asked what the different forms of abuse could be in an unhealthy relationship. Students may come up with most or all of the six types of abuse that are laid out in it. And the students are assisted in what, what I would quote here saying, naming forms of abuse students may not know. They are told of six forms of abuse, physical, sexual, emotional, financial, spiritual, and technological. Students are then told that spiritual abuse can include abuse related to spiritual beliefs, culture, or an individual's sense of self. And if they are not allowed to do the things they enjoy and that build their sense of self, the relationship is unhealthy and be considered abusive. Let me repeat that one more time, what is in the framework that may be approved later on today. That if children are not allowed to do the things that they enjoy, I don't know about you, I can only speak for myself, but there were a lot of things that I enjoyed as a teenager that I was not supposed to enjoy. And my mom and dad were very quick to let me know, Tim, that is not good for you. Imagine 
empowering children to say, you know what, if you've got somebody telling you you're not allowed to do something you enjoy, they're spiritually abusing you. This is unhealthy language to be sharing with our children. Now, many of you today share the same Judeo-Christian values that I have, but I have to recognize this, that not everybody does. But as loving parents, we do all hold one thing in common. That is the fact that we care about our children more than anyone else on this earth. We love our children more than anyone else on this earth. We have been systematically training up our children to know, to trust, and to live out our family values. Another thing we all have in common is a push within the California public education system to systematically undermine our authority as parents, to systematically undo what you and I have spent years trying to accomplish with our families, to systematically indoctrinate our children into a way of living that is contrary to our family values. And it is for that reason we stand today against the approval of this rotten, disgusting framework. And to the California Board of Education, we all say, not on our watch. Right. Not on our watch. Right. 